Hey there, today's lesson is gonna be outdoors. We're gonna be on a snake hike. We're looking for the rarest snake that occurs in the county where my nature lab is. And that's Boulder County, Colorado. And the rarest snake here is the Plains hognose snake, Heterodon nasicus. Um, why is it so rare here? Well, we, we're just on the very edge of its range. We don't have very much habitat for it. Um, and so it's just this one spot and only two have ever been found in Boulder County. Um, one, oh, about 15 years ago or so, and then another one about six years ago. So um, we're gonna see if we can find one tonight. Stay tuned, and we're gonna learn all about the Plains Hognose Snake. Now there's all, all different sorts of ways to do a snake hike. Um, you can get off the trail and wander around in the rocks. Um, if you just look, Look over there, what I'm talking about there. That'd be really tough to find a snake in. Oh, a rabbit just jumped in front of us. So we'll see all sorts of wildlife during our, there he goes, up the road. We'll see all sorts of wildlife during our snake hike, but we're gonna stick to the road. And the reason is, is because the snakes we're looking for, the hognose snake, is extremely cryptic. Take a look at this. I mean, they are even hard to see on roads. And so if, we're gonna have a good chance to find one tonight. It's gonna to be on the road. Now, if it's another time of year, we could probably go off trail and, and, and have some luck finding one. But um, this time of year with the grass as brown as it is and as tall as it is, because it's, it's August, it's the end of the growing season, um, it won't be, uh, it'll be really hard to find one. But on the road, if we get lucky, we'll definitely find one on the road. Hognose snakes are pretty neat. They're um, a diurnal species, um, and, and most of the time they're active early spring and then again in early fall. We're just entering their activity season here again, um, here in Colorado, but for the fall, but you can find them all summer long. You just have to get out late, um, right at sunset, and stay out a little bit later. I mean, you'll find them after dark. But we don't wanna do that today. We're gonna be out here until dark, um, and we're just gonna see if we can definitely find one. So the type of behavior when you're active in the early morning and at dusk, so at dawn and dusk, that type of behavior is called crepuscular. And by being crepuscular, you're avoiding the heat of the day and you're also avoiding the dangers of night um, where you may not be able to see your predators coming. Hognose snakes are, are typically um, only found during daylight hours. Now, they can be found a little bit after dark sometimes, but we'll see, um, and we call that a di diurnal, and that means day active. And if you're active during the night, such like the prairie rattlesnakes are this time of year, we'll call that nocturnal. Um, and so that's the, 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 two, the two opposites, the diurnal and then the nocturnal, but if you're active during dawn and dusk, we call that crepuscular. Plains hognose snakes, the whole, the whole genus of hognose snakes is heterodon, and that means variable teeth, or, or they have teeth that are different. And a lot of folks and people out there will call them rear fanged teeth, and it's kind of a hard thing to call them to say they have fangs, because those teeth are not hollow, and they're not used for injecting venom. Um, they are used to help eat um, the prey, and hognose snakes' main prey items are toads, um, especially spadefoot toads or just the, the other toads, um, the warty toads um, that you see around. So, um, but to, ha to call them fanged, now I'm sure a lot of people watching this might be arguing with me right now or yelling at the screen, no, they're rear fanged. And yeah, they do have teeth that appear, that are long and thin and needle-like in the back of their mouth that are used to when they capture a toad, the toad, um, uh, one of the things that we, when we talk at the lab, when you catch a toad, what's the first thing that it does? And most people say hops, right? Yeah, it's always trying to hop away, but that's, that's actually happening before you pick it up. And then another thing it'll do is it'll pee all over itself and pee all over yourself. That's to make anything that puts it in your mouth to, to drop it 
right away, of course, because they don't want it that 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 it's it actually is, it's more water than than any than, than more like water than urine, um, and it can actually maybe even help spread some of the toxins from the from the the toad's um, poison glands on the back of their neck, maybe um, kind of spread them around the body. But then, then another thing that a toad's defense will do, it will puff up full of air. They'll fill up their lungs and they'll be really hard. They turn into little beach balls for that hognose snake to try and eat. And so those teeth are in the back of the mouth. And if you watch a hognose snake eat a toad, um, as it climb, as it walks its skull over, 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 the, over the, the toad, those rear, those rear teeth become engaged in the feeding process and they'll poke the toad and then the toad saliva is really toxic um, to the toad and that can help relax the muscles or the toad um, kind of paralyze the toad or even start the digestion process early and then the toad will deflate and so it can be swallowed easier. Instead of following a, a big ball of air, the toad gets, um, there's not much to a toad once the once the once it deflates, and it's a lot easier for the hognose snake to swallow it. And that's really what those teeth are, are adapted for, is to kind of help that snake walk its head over it. It's not really injecting venom like a fangs, the front fangs of, of, a, of a pit viper or a, a viper or even, even the fixed front fangs of, of, of the cobras. Um, so um, I don't like to call them fangs. I just call them because there's, if you look at snake teeth all over, I mean, look at these different skulls of snakes. They all have different teeth from the, the, the teeth that um, of, of like an emerald tree boa or the hognose snake or even a water snake or a carpet python or a rat snake or a king snake. Everybody's got different teeth and the, all their teeth are adapted or have evolved for the specific prey that they eat. And so hognose snakes, those teeth are just adapted for eating toads. Um, and that's what it's, it just helps them swallow a, a, a big ball of air when the toad puffs up full of air. Not only do hognose snakes have cool teeth for eating toads, they also, their, their whole, their face is adapted for finding and eating toads. So one of the main toads that they eat um, are spadefoot toads. And spadefoot toads spend most of their time underground. If you look at a spadefoot toads, um, why, how they get their name is they have a little spade on their back of their foot that allows them to dig and they sweep out the soil right from underneath them and they go straight down underground as, and, and, and then they just hide there for long, sometimes months, depending on if it rains or not. Or, um, and, they, and, and they'll, if there's a two inch or a bigger rain, they'll come up to the surface to breed. But the hognose snake has that upturned snout for, for finding them. That's what that, that nose is for, is they can slither along using their forked tongue to smell left and right, and they'll find where a toad is, and then they'll use that little spade on the front of their nose, that hog nose, to dig and dig and dig and dig until they can get to the toad. And then once, once they get to the toad, they grab it and they swallow it alive. Um, and so that, that's that, that, that upturned snout on a, the hog nose, the pig nose, is used as a little shovel to help them dig up their main prey item, which is spadefoot toads. And other toads will dig down and they also eat tiger salamanders. And another thing they really love to eat are turtle eggs. And so when, when the, the, the painted turtles are nesting, um, hog nose snakes, are found with their heads completely underground, just gobbling up painted turtles. And painted turtles can lay, um, on average, 14, 15 eggs per clutch. That's a huge meal for a hognose snake to eat all those eggs. I've actually pulled them out of, out of painted turtle nests before, and you just pull them gently up like this, and egg yolk comes pouring out of their mouth. They've eaten so many turtle eggs. It's really amazing. Um, so that upturned snout allows the hognose snake to dig and get their prey. Just another amazing adaptation for, they have the teeth and then those, and then that upturned snout for finding and eating toads, salamanders, and of course, turtle eggs. Just really cool. All right, it's starting to get dark on us here in our, in our snake hike. Um, so maybe we won't see a hognose snake in the wild, but like I said, only two have ever been found in our county, in, in this county before, so chances of us seeing one were pretty small. I still had to come out and try though. Um, but maybe we'll see a rattlesnake. It's kind of that time of night for a rattlesnake. Or uh, maybe a bull snake will cross the trail or a, or a wandering garter snake. This is a good place for them as well. Um, milk snakes occur here. 
we'd have to be here after hours to see a milk snake and the place closes at sunset so i gotta hurry back to the car so that i don't miss the closing but maybe on the way back we will see a rattlesnake or a bull snake all right so we've been seeing some videos of hognose snakes and seeing what they look like and who thinks they look like rattlesnakes they do they really really do and so let's talk, let's talk briefly about mimicry um a lot of people think that our bull snake looks like a rattlesnake i don't think they look like rattlesnakes at all but if you look at a hognose snake and you put them side by side you can still pick out the rattlesnake but let's take away the rattlesnake and just see the bull so see the hognose snake kind of looks like a rattlesnake has the same stripes on the side of the face it's got the same body shape of being short and fat um, and, the, and the pattern and the colors are very, very similar to rattlesnakes. And so mimicry in snakes is, it's been studied, but there's a lot more work that could be done. Um, is it just um, convergent camouflage? And that, that would be a good, good theory because when rattlesnakes evolved, they didn't evolve for human predators or humans to know the difference. Rattlesnakes um, evolved to maybe a response to massive herbivores and they didn't want to be stepped on. So that rattle is more of an attention getting thing. And even before rattlesnakes evolved, snakes evolved the ability to rattle their tail. Um, like the bull snake can rattle its tail. Um, hognose snakes can do that as well. Um, but it does, it's not as, not as impressive as the bull snake one. Um, so the... <clears throat> I guess what I'm saying here is when we look at it, is it a mimic or is it just convergent camouflage? Because it is really, really good camouflage for the, the hognose snake and the rattlesnake to look similar. Um, and the, the prairie rattlesnake isn't deadly enough to those big herbivores to really make it, uh, to really make it a difference for, for in terms of, of whether you want to become a, a mimic of, of that. Um, Mimicry is really, it's a complex subject. We'll talk about it. It's not as simple as, or as clear cut like the monarch butterfly and the, the viceroy butterfly, the, the old classic examples. But we will, we'll talk a lot more about mimicry in future lessons. But I just, want you, just wanted to throw it out there and show you how closely hognose snakes resemble rattlesnakes. And that may be why there's only two ever been documented in this county is because they are so they are so similar that people see a hognose snake and they think it's a rattlesnake. Even down to the tail, look how the, look at the tail of this of this hognose snake. It's lighter color. And if it's moving it, it might be construed as a rattle, maybe. Um, and if you've seen it, but if you see them side by side, you can definitely pick out which one's the hognose snake. But just think about that in terms of the evolution of mimicry or the evolution of pattern. Um, is it camouflage or is it mimicry? A um, lot of unanswered questions there and really fun stuff to think about. All right, something else that's really cool about hognose snake, we choose a, chose a great snake. They are just pretty amazing, is their response to predation. So if something tries to eat them, what do they do? Now, we know rattlesnakes will rattle, right? Um, maybe that's a, more of an attention getting thing to not be stepped on, but and bull snakes will hiss and strike. Um, water snakes will flatten their head to look like they're, they're bigger than they really are. So what do hognose snakes do? The hognose snake's response to predation is really kind of fascinating. The first thing they do, of course, is just try and sit still and not be seen. They'll just lay there as still as possible. And then the second thing they do is they'll flatten out their neck. They have the ability to flatten out their neck just like a cobra does. This is probably more of an adaptation for what they eat, which are the toads, because they're so big. They have to swallow a ball, <laughs> if you think about it. But it also helps them flatten out their neck so that they appear bigger than they really are. And if that doesn't work, they'll strike and hiss. Um, and it's, it's really an intimidating hiss and strike at you. And then, the, then a lot of times what will eat hognose snakes are raptors, birds of prey, um, hawks, um, that they don't really care if you're venomous. They can catch a rattlesnake like it's just as easy as they can catch a, a, a bull snake or a garter snake. And so 
their response maybe to being grabbed, because if you grab that hognose snake after all this defensive posturing that it's done, you know, the flattening is out, the striking, the hissing, it will play dead. And when they play dead, it's really fun. Um, I don't like to have hognose snakes do it when I like to see them now. My, my, my challenge is, is to encounter a hognose snake, get the video I need, and not have it ever play dead. But some have, and so I've gotten video of that. And so here, watch, watch what happened. They will start writhing around, flopping, flopping, flopping. And then they'll start pooping and smearing that poop all over themselves. And included in that poop is musk, which is really foul tasting. Um, don't ask me how I know that. But then the last bit that they do is they roll over onto their back, they throw their mouth open, and their tongue hang out like this, and they pretend they're dead. It's really fun to watch. And then after they've done that, after they've pretended they're dead, if you put them back on their belly, they instantly roll back onto their back. No, I'm really dead. You better leave me alone. Um, or I taste horrible. I smeared poop and musk all over myself. You don't want to eat me anymore. Um, but then if they... If, if you walk away a little bit, they'll peek up and they'll look at you to see if you're still there. And then think about this as maybe as a adaptation for avoiding being eaten by hawks. And so if hawks kill a rattlesnake or kill a bull snake, the moment they catch it, they'll gra reach down with their beak and bite it um, by the head to, to kill it. If you pretend like you're dead right away, before the hawk can get you, before the hawk even has to pick you, bite you, then it's gonna fly off and not kill you and take you to the nest where in the spring, when the baby hawk babies are growing up fast, the mom and dad hawks will just catch and catch, 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 lots and lots of prey and bring it to the nest and just drop it off for the babies. And it's, uh, they cache the food. And then when the babies are hungry or when they're awake, they'll eat as much food as they can. And then, but if you're dropping off a, a hognose snake that isn't dead but is playing dead, maybe that's an adaptation for escaping predation. You get dropped off of the nest, mom and dad leave, baby's still asleep, baby hawk's still asleep. You peek up, don't see anybody, you can slither away. Um, it's pretty amazing that, because why would you play dead? Why wouldn't you defend yourself? Why wouldn't you bite? Hognose snakes don't bite in defense. Um, all those things really don't make much sense, except for maybe if you can avoid being killed in your encounter with a predator and they leave you alone later on, drop you off at the nest, maybe you could escape. Just fascinating behavior. I hope you enjoyed it.